A lot of you have been asking, what is the M1 iPad Pro like to use with an external display? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about its limitations, its good points, its bad points, and the overall experience. So hit that like button if that's what you came here to watch. Hello everyone, my name is Mike, and here at Tech Kamoon, we uncover Apple tech and Apple related tech. So hit that subscribe button if that's what you're into. But today I'm gonna to talk about the M1 iPad Pro and what it's like using an external display. So I'm gonna run through all the tests because it's been a little bit of a while since I've used an iPad as my daily driver. So I want to share my experience with using an external display and show you the tests live so that you guys know what to expect the typical um, problems that you may come across and some of its limitations as well. So we're at my desk over here. So I've got the M1 iPad Pro. This is the 12.9 inch uh, and it's got the M1 processor, 128 gigabytes of storage and the eight gigabytes of unified memory. Now ignore the M1 iMac. I'm still testing that one out, but if there's anything you want me to test out on the M1 iMac, just leave a comment down below and also stay subscribed for the full video. So I've got two monitors over here. So I paid for these monitors. It's, you know, they don't know anything about this video or anything like that. These are my monitors. So I'm not endorsing these monitors or anything like that. These are just the monitors that I have. So the first monitor I have is the Acer Pro Designer Display. And as you can see, it's a bit of a beast because it's 32 inches so it's absolutely massive but it has all the support you need really color accurate really low delta e values as well i absolutely love it and you can connect it via display port hdmi you know usb c to your devices even offers charging and stuff like that and it's also got the built-in usb hub so it gives me four external uh, usb a ports so i connect up different peripherals to it and right now i've also connected a an external hard drive to it just to see if firstly the monitor can power the iPad plus uh, an image plus can I access that hard drive via the files app so I want to see you know how much iPad OS uh, can handle all of that and then alongside that we've got the view sonic so this is a 27 inch so a little bit smaller still bigger than the 24 inch but 27 inches uh, 1080p display instead of 4k and it connects via HDMI so I've just got this uh, I think it's called a uni 8-in-1 hub I'll again leave a link down in the description for everything I speak about today anyway and yeah and I've basically connected up to these extension cables just so I can connect up to the M1 iPad Pro now there are going to be a couple of tests that I want to do as well so firstly obviously test out the connection see what it's like like as a display uh, using the external display on an M1 iPad and secondly I want to test out this little USB port on the uh, Magic Keyboard as well just to see if we get any kind of video signal out and that's basically it. So first test let's see the 4k display so does the M1 iPad Pro allow me to unlock the gorgeous display on here now I have run this test before but unfortunately as you'll see in a second it doesn't work too well. So there are two problems that I find with this, okay? So firstly, we don't get the full screen uh, full screen experience. So we still get the black bars on the sides, which, which kind of suck, to be honest. And the second issue that I found with this display, as well as, uh, well, as well as other displays in general, is that for, ex for, as you can see, the image on the M1 iPad is fantastic, but then here it looks completely washed out. Now I've tested it obviously with the other, other M1 Max, so the M1 iMac as well as the M1 uh, MacBook Air as well. So it's nothing to do with the processor or the USB ports in these things. It just seems to be an issue with iPad OS, and it sucks because I can't calibrate it or anything like that, or not from what I know. So if you do know how to calibrate the monitor within iPad OS, then obviously drop me a comment down below and let me know. But so far, I've not been able to figure it out, and I don't want to be messing around with the settings in the monitor itself because the monitor itself in terms of settings are all correct. So I don't want to be messing around with that. And then when I connect up, let's say this Mac or this Mac, it then shifts all the colors and then I'm gonna to have to set another profile to it, which I don't want to sort of go through. I don't I never had to experience that because every other Mac that I've owned just connects this monitor perfectly. Um, now, in terms of the full screen experience, you can get it, but you can only do it with images. So you, I'll show you uh, in a second. But if I just click on this little button over here, as you can see, we got the image on the screen. And then if we just play that, as you can see, it's playing it. 
you know, no, no issues at all. So I can use LumaFusion and edit it like so. And with the M1, uh, with the Affinity Designer, as you can see, it does this weird stretch screen if you already have a project open in Affinity Designer. Now, this obviously is probably an issue with Affinity Designer. And the way that I fix it is I just go out of the, uh, the project and then go back into it and then it goes back to normal. But again, I can't really use this setup because the color is not accurate on this display, which sucks. So now let's try to access the hard drive that I've connected via the USB hub and see if that works. So I'm in the files application and yes, I do see the Seagate backup drive right there. So that's good news. Let's just open that up. Yep, so that's awesome. We've got it just over there. So that's really, really good. The backup drive does work absolutely fine on this. So I'm really happy that if you do have an external display with a hub or anything like that, it will work with the M1 iPad. Now let's try connecting it via that smart USB-C connector. So unplug it out of here and plug it into here and just see if we get any image at all. So it's charging, but it's not displaying an image. So that port is looks like it's just purely for charging. Now I will test it obviously with a normal USB hub, but I pretty much know that that is just for charging, but just for you guys who, you know, may have been curious to see whether there was any more functionality out of that USB port, you're not gonna be able to connect an external display to it. And as you can see, even the USB hub, isn't showing in the files application. So don't expect, again, to be connecting hard drives through that USB port. So now let's try connecting up the 1080p display and see if there are any differences. So I'm just gonna leave that plugged in and let me connect the 1080p display. So this is connecting via a hub, via HDMI, and then we've got the monitor just over here. So there you go, it's connected, but I see another issue. So not only do we get the black bars, I'll switch it to something that you can sort of see a little bit easier, but not only do we get the black bars, firstly, the image is a little bit off as well. And also we get some black bars at the top here as well. I don't know if that's, if you can see because of the lighting, but we're now getting a much bigger crop. And the weird thing is, if I just quickly take this off of the stand, the image is not actually that much bigger than the iPad itself because of the the crop. So that's not really good to good to see. Now again it could be a monitor issue or it could be iPad OS. But again, this shows its limitations. Uh, I think they need to bring out something really special with the next update of iPad OS because with Mac OS, you don't get any issues really. You just connect up to the monitors and they work fine. Fortunately with these, you, uh, yeah, you do run into an issue. Now it could be the monitors. I don't wanna put the blame on this iPad because you might be running external display and it works absolutely fine. But I've got two monitors from two different brands, two different resolutions and different specifications and I have issues with both so two out of two issues it doesn't look good and I've again experienced certain issues let's say at work when I've tried connecting to an, an external uh, projector as well that hasn't worked well at all so yeah just be aware that you might experience some issues so as you can see the overall experience of using an M1 iPad Pro with an external display is pretty bad in my opinion I mean it's not like horrible, but it's not great either, especially compared to like an M1 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or even an iMac. Uh, the experience just isn't as seamless as I would have expected. You don't get the full screen experience. You can display uh, the full screen like viewer using let's say LumaFusion or Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. So if you need that full screen experience to see what you're actually editing, then it is possible. But as you can see, we're using my two displays, it didn't really work well and it might just be the two di external displays that I've used that just doesn't work well with the M1 iPad Pro but to me that's two displays kind of too many because I should be able to use this thing with any display that I choose to and should get the same experience as I would get with any of the MacBooks that I've ever used. I've never had any issues with colors and stuff like that when it came to connecting to an external display and that overall black bar issue just 
it, I, I really don't like it. I don't think it's a great experience. To me, it's a little bit limiting that it's through the only Thunderbolt port on the M1 iPad. So it means that essentially you're either gonna have to buy an external like Thunderbolt dock so it can split those out, or you're basically stuck with that port being used for the display. So if you wanted to then connect up a Thunderbolt uh, external hard drive, well, you're not gonna be able to because you're only gonna be able to connect to one or the other, unless, like I said, you use a Thunderbolt 4 dock, which I'll leave a link down in the description if you wanna pick one up. Now I get it, a lot of people do use this with an external display and use it for professional applications, and that's great. But for my workflow, it just doesn't quite work uh, because I do use an external display quite a lot and the over experience with this, with using an external display, just isn't great. So if you are someone who uses an external display, uh, I probably would give the M1 iPad Pro a miss in my tests and with my uses. It just didn't work very well. And using just one port for that connectivity, uh, unless if you buy like a Thunderbolt dock or anything like that, it's just gonna be too limited. Because if you wanna connect any other Thunderbolt devices, you're gonna be basically stuck. But anyway, I really hope that these tests helped you out and help you decide on whether the M1 iPad is the right choice for you, depending on your setup. If you did enjoy this video, then please hit that like button. And also, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. However, if you wanna watch more content, then you guys know what to do. There are two fantastic videos right over here. You're absolutely gonna love them. I mean, either one you're gonna enjoy. So anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.